Thank you to Policy Genius for sponsoring today's video. If you have anyone relying on your income, you need life insurance, it's that simple. Policy Genius is your one stop shop to find and buy the insurance you need at the right price. We all hope we never need life insurance, but having a policy in place gives us a sense of comfort that important things like a mortgage, child care, and other expenses are covered if something should happen to either one of us. Since life insurance typically gets more expensive as we age, now is the time to buy. Policy Genius was built to modernize the life insurance industry. Their technology makes it easy to compare life insurance quotes from top companies like AIG and Prudential in just a few clicks to find the lowest price. With Policy Genius, you can find life insurance policies that start at just $17 per month for $500,000 of coverage. Their licensed experts can help you find the options that offer coverage in as little as a week and avoid unnecessary medical exams. Your loved ones deserve a financial safety net. You deserve a smarter way to find and buy it. Head to policygenius.com slash redpoppyranch or click the link in the description to get your free life insurance quotes and see how much you can save. Sunday, October 23rd at 5 p.m. Mountain Standard Time, we're going to be doing a live you can ask Heath all the questions you want. Or Cedar. <laughs> ask her all the questions. Have your questions ready. So that's two weeks from this Sunday, 5 p.m. Mountain Standard Time. We don't do these very often because they... Well, they don't go very well most of the time, but... <laughs> they don't go quite as well as we want them to. But uh, we appreciate you guys, and we'd love to have some questions live, and uh, I don't have know. Have you there. Hanging have out with there. us for a minute or two. See you in two weeks. <laughs>
The idea of trying to be prepared for whatever life's going to throw at you is not a new concept. My parents were raised by people that lived through the Great Depression. Not that long ago, having the skills to can food, or make bread, or simply cook from scratch was standard operating procedure around most homes, because nobody else was going to take care of them. So whether it's firewood or whether it's knowing how to can food and utilizing what came from your summer garden, I sleep better at night when I feel like we're making an effort to be prepared in the places that I have control over. I don't know if this is a byproduct of being a husband and a father, but I always worry over things like this. And the way I resolve that worry is to split and stack firewood or to simply get prepared in the places where I need to be prepared. Our oldest daughter, Sage, has been spending some time up here with us helping Cedar work on the shop. And I most certainly always love it when she's up here. 23 years ago, when Cedar and I brought Sage home from the hospital, I knew that everything had just changed in my life. And I knew I had responsibilities in ways that I had never had responsibilities before. I recognized that I needed to get rid of a few friends, and I also recognized that in order to keep Cedar home with Sage, my job was pretty important. And I needed to work pretty hard on having skills that would simply pay the bills. I knew that if I learned a trade, I could make a good living and that would be enough to keep Cedar home with our kids. So the issue now is we have so much dirt to do something with if I want the pad to be as big as it is. So Mark thinks we have north of 30, maybe even 40 truckloads of dirt that have to be moved by the end of the day. Since Mark has gotten the driveway cut into our property, he is now moving all the dirt around that he needs to, to continue to expand the size of this parking area. The hope is that it might be 60 by 80 or even 80 by 80, but the bottom line is we won't know until we get some dirt moved around. Once we get this new pad cut in and shaped, I will likely have a few loads of gravel brought in and then I'll have the ability to keep my trailers, plow truck, even the tractor, things that don't need to be so close to the house, I can keep over here.
The appeal for me to live completely off-grid in the mountains of Idaho simply comes down to one thing, and that's freedom. But there's also a tremendous responsibility that comes with this lifestyle, because when things do go wrong, there's very few people to point fingers at. So all of these things require constant effort, but if I could truly create a homestead that could provide the food that my family needs to live on, there may be no freer life out there. But I know as well as you do that to provide all of the food that my family would need is going to require more and more work, especially around our livestock. Getting this pad cut in and shaped not only will provide a place to put trailers and trucks, but it's also directly going to affect our ability and the quantity of animals that we can keep around here. So using the 36 inch bucket on Mark's excavator, he literally digs the hillside out and then he throws that dirt behind him. And then using the blade, he pushes the dirt around as he needs to, but it's kind of a process of leapfrog with the dirt piles. I've got the backhoe scheduled to be used and I'm hoping that I can get in there with a the backhoe and move a lot of that dirt around while Mark digs the hill out. And hopefully it speeds up the amount of time that it takes to get this job finished. Once all of the dirt work is done, then the fun begins. We still have to cut a road in that will cross both the new land and our old land and hopefully provide a switchback trail up to the little cabin that's much safer. A big part of the reason why we purchased this land is because we knew that having both of these pieces of property right next to each other would ultimately allow us to have a safer switchback trail that could get to the very back of our property. From this point right here to the back of our property is nearly a mile and over a thousand feet in elevation in difference. So at some point we will start cutting those trails in to get safely to the back of the property. The thing that I often forget about is most of the time that humans have been on this planet, they have been working hard to survive. We are no different here and now, although we have the modern amenities, that naturally help do this much, much better than people have before. But it seems that all of the infrastructure that supports the current system, meaning the food on the shelves at the grocery store, that infrastructure has been in jeopardy for quite some time. And it seems like we're only one bad snowstorm or one bad hurricane away from running out of food and water. So at the end of the day, utilizing all of this firewood that Mark has been able to pile up for me over here on this new property is most definitely a gift, even though I'm the one that gets to go through it and process it. At the end of the day, we will have our firewood bases covered for a long time to come in both the house and the shop, and I will sleep better because of this.
I've talked about my grandfather on my mom's side many times before, but after growing up in the hills of Kentucky and recognizing the poverty all around him, and then that being compounded by the Great Depression, he took off walking. And he would literally travel from one side of the country to the other, both walking and riding trains and doing whatever he had to do to make money. He would then keep some of that money, but the majority was sent back home to the family. I don't know all of the places that he worked, but I know he saw men get killed, and I know he saw some pretty extreme working conditions at that time. But whatever happened to him in those formidable years, he recognized the need to take care of his family and to take care of it in a way where the poverty that he grew up with was just simply not an option. So he would ultimately end up relocating from Kentucky to Arizona with his family. And on my dad's side, when my dad was 16, they left the family ranch over here in southeastern Idaho and they moved back to Arizona. My grandmother, my dad's mom, was born and raised in Mesa, Arizona, and that's where my grandparents chose to raise their kids. On both sides of my family, I am the descendant of people that were always kind of looking to see what was over the next hill. And frankly, almost all of us are descendants from people just like that. They were always trying to get ahead, get out from under oppression, and simply create a better life for their family. What I'm doing here is no different. Again, I only have the benefit of modern day equipment and the understanding of those that came before me. I have been waiting for these louvered vents to show up for about a month now and this is way too big to go up there but this is what showed up and I ordered two of them and it was a bit of a questionable website but I spent a couple hundred bucks because they actually had the dimensions that I was looking for but this is not the dimension this is actually twice as big as as it was supposed to be and they're both damaged they're both banged up and I'm gonna try and cut them down I'm gonna try and take them apart uh, I'm gonna waste probably three hours at least taking these things apart and rebuilding them and I'm they're currently 24 by 36 in uh, measurement and I need them to be 18 by 24 
With everything else that's going on, I still need to get the proper attic ventilation taken care of on the house. And I haven't installed the original louvered vents on the front of the house that I wanted to. I did install all of the bird block venting so the attic has had adequate venting. But this is the final piece of the puzzle. And of course the 24 by 36 vents that showed up are way too big. They were supposed to be 18 by 24 and I'm not even sure if 18 by 24 is small enough. But while it's important to have proper venting, this also needs to look right. No, I gotta go. Okay, what are you doing? You drop. Reed doesn't want to go, but Callie does. Alright, that's an 18 by 24 vent. That's what I originally wanted. I'm gonna have to take the other one apart and do the same thing, but I can save it. I'm gonna put some wood trim around the outside so you won't you won't see the screws or anything. Okay, this is 24 by 36. I reduced it down to 18 by 24 after placing it up on the house. This needs to be 14 by 20. So I'm gonna reduce it again. Getting this vent installed correctly is important for proper attic ventilation, but it's also super important that it looks right. Too big or too small, it's not going to look right, but it also still needs to serve its purpose and function as an attic vent.
on our next upcoming video, I'm still gonna be working closely with Mark, getting a lot of the dirt moved over on the new property, but I also need to get back to the house and finish a few things up before I've got frost on the roof. I still need to adjust the rain gutters on the back side of the house and make sure that they are sitting correctly so when the snow slides it doesn't damage them, which shouldn't take too long and I also need to get the vent on the other side of the house installed as well now that I can see that this one is properly sized and installed. My lovely wife Cedar knows that I'm running out of excuses as far as getting the house stained is concerned. This was one of the things that I needed to get done before I could stain the house. More than likely, before it gets too cold, we're going to dive into the prep work and staining on the house hopefully for the last time for a very long time. twice that size looks so much better it was just too big again so I mean I bought two I, I still don't know what happened but I somehow paid for the bigger I don't know I don't know how I ended up with those <laughs> they were supposed to be that's that was the original size they were supposed to be I made them work um, I have to do the other side now but this was kind of the experiment so so, and the stain? The stain. That's the what stain this, you know, a lot of this stuff is about. If I get this done, that's the front of the house. So technically the front of the house is now ready for stain. We're waiting for the weather to turn. Now it's nice. A little cooler, yeah. <laughs> a big concern with the front of the house, again, is that the pigment in the stain is consistent. Uh, the, the, the stain that we used is a very, very high quality stain, but it's notorious for doing this. If you don't constantly stay on top of it with mixing it when you're putting it down, it does this. The deeper you get into the stain or the, the lower the quantity gets, the darker the stain gets. So next week, Mark and I are going to be back to uh, moving dirt. Um, we got to get that finished up at some point. The weather's going to change enough to where it's going to make moving quantities of dirt like that around very, very difficult. Anytime.
Thank you.